Okay, in the last part of my talk, I wanted to uh, introduce the idea that AI might be used as a tool for neuroscience. And I want to summarize this section by saying, we're beginning to be able to see what the neurons are saying to each other in a way that we never have before. And so in order to understand what I'm going to show you now, you have to realize that um, a neural network represents information as, the pattern of as a pattern of activity. And so this pattern of activity here, you can see on the left, uh, might mean a lion. Whereas this pattern of activity here underneath uh, might mean a penguin. So those patterns of activity, we can, once we know those patterns of activity in the network, we can link them to other things. For example, here, somebody is linking different patterns of activity to language, to words. And so you can look in, if you, once you've done that, you can ask the neural network, tell me what shock looks like. Or tell me what Africa looks like. And you, it produces an image like this. Tell me what winter looks like or Roman. It's starting to show you what concepts look like. But imagine instead of tying those patterns of activity to words, instead of doing that, if we tied them to uh, patterns of brain activity, now we could take a pattern of brain activity and say, what does that look like? We can really almost see what the, neuro what the neurons are saying. So let's see uh, how this would work. Now we can uh, take the same pattern of activity and try to learn or understand the relationship between the pattern of activity in the brain and the pattern of activity in the network, and then produce an image. And this is really working amazingly well now. Here's, uh, I think, the state-of-the-art most recent example, uh, where the top row, there's a person lying in an, in an MRI scanner, just like the one in Neurogazer, and the top row is an image that a person is actually looking at, and the bottom row is an AI that can only see the person's brain activity guessing what, the, what, the, what the, the person is looking at. And look how amazingly uh, similar it is. We have a giraffe, whatever this strange insect is, um, a, a fire engine. It can, we can really see with some incredible detail uh, from the brain activity what's inside the person's thoughts. It's working pretty well for, language, for, for, for uh, vision, and it, amazingly to me, it almost works for language as well. Look at this. This is, this is now somebody listening to a story with complex, deep emotions and thoughts in it, and then an AI looking at their brain activity in these brain regions here and guessing what those thoughts and emotions were. And so this one is not quite as impressive in terms of its ability, but it's much more impressive in terms of what it's trying to do because of how complex the ideas are. And so it, it, it almost does it. So this is what the person listened to. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or run away. Instead, I said, leave me alone. I don't need your help. Adam disappeared, and I cleaned up alone crying. And the neural network looks at the brain activity in these brain areas, and, and it, it reads out the following. Started to scream and cry. Look, it's exactly the same. And then she just said, I told you to leave me alone. You can't hurt me. I'm sorry. And then he stormed off. Adam disappeared. I thought he, he'd left. I started to cry. I mean, it's really almost there. We can almost read out the people's deep internal emotional thoughts.